go over uh, some of the areas of concern that we have now that the shutdown of the federal government is, is being extended. Let me start out by saying that in most areas we will be all right going through February. But after that, there are certain areas of concern uh, for two categories. One category is the city government itself and where we depend on the federal government. And the second category is services to the people of Madison, Dane County, who will be adversely impacted in regards to uh, the lack of, of federal government services. Let me say that in terms of the areas where the city government is affected, such as certain reimbursements, certain payments uh, for transportation services and things of that sort. We've got the resources, we've got uh, the reserve funds that we can in effect cover that as a bridge uh, to, to take care of, uh, of, of those items. But in regards to uh, some of the services that the federal government provides to the people of the community, we do have some concerns that if this is extended through February, that uh, we as a community are going to have to step forward and take on the responsibility uh, for which we don't know whether or not we will be reimbursed. So this is going to take a moment because I have to go through some individual notes uh, from each agency. You'll see in some instances uh, it is a matter of inconvenience uh, and, and not as serious as, as in others. For example, in regards to the library services, uh, our library works in providing uh, access through uh, the federal database to library patrons. And a, uh, San, Diego San Diego State University has compiled some samples of the kinds of services that have stopped. For example, you can still reach the Census Bureau homepage and the data, but nothing's being updated. This is true on some of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Bureau of Justice Statistics, Bureau of Economic Analysis, all the kinds of reliance on getting current data has basically halted and is not uh, uh, dependable being updated. Um, Federal Highway, Federal Highway Administration, we don't see a lot happening there, except long term, this may uh, result in a delay as Federal Highway Administration employees who may work on projects uh, such as repairs, reconstruction of the interstate, fall behind on their workload, and that could delay uh, what, what happens to us. Um, we've got a city employee uh, who we may lose who's applying for a work visa and those visas are not being uh, uh, processed. That's of great concern not us, just to us as a city government but to all employers in the area who may have uh, documented individuals in their employment who are in need of, of, of current uh, paperwork to uh, maintain their, 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 their proper employment. In, in terms of the federal courts, we are involved in some federal court proceedings. Uh, we're involved in, not directly, uh, but as a friend of the court in areas involving litigation uh, over certain federal actions dealing with immigrants, undocumented individuals, things of that sort. This will slow down the determination of cases like that. 
Now I want to get into uh, a couple of areas where, where we've got some very serious concerns in, in regards to the people of our community. We have child and adult care food programs. We've got WIC, which applies to support for uh, infants and, and their mothers. We've got SNAP, and those are just two uh, programs that can be affected. And while we have enough funds to get through February, after that, for children and low-income families who defend, uh, depend on some of these federal programs, we are going to have issues. Uh, I saw a news report recently about uh, how the local food banks are, are working, and it's very important that they be well-stocked, particularly for foods at any time of the year in the winter, but for, for, for infants and, and, and toddlers as well as their uh, uh, nursing mothers. Uh, child care, the Head Start program. Head Start program, again, enough funding to get through February, but where there's federal funds in regards to child care programs, we've got very serious concerns as we go into March. We're going to have to, as a community, come up with a strategy if uh, this, this continues. And let me just say that in most of these areas, we will start as we get into uh, the month of February preparing alternative plans if the shutdown continues. Um, in the area of law enforcement uh, and public safety, uh, there's not much to affect our fire department, fortunately. They're well stocked. They are not dependent on any federal funds. We've got a number of federal uh, grant applications in, with the Department of Justice affecting the Madison Police Department. This will undoubtedly provide delays in the funding of those grants. But again, this is the kind of situation where the city's uh, resources will be able to cover any, any kind of problems of that sort. Um, As you know, we're doing some long-term planning in regards to Madison Metro, uh, not the least of which is a couple of grant applications. At this point, the Federal Transit Administration staff isn't available to answer questions, and that's creating another area of, of delay. Uh, Home closings for uh, families who are either eligible for Veterans Administration loans or certain FHA loans are in jeopardy, and that's of deep concern to us. People have to make decisions. They've made commitments on offers to purchase, or they would like to. They'd like to move on uh, with their new household choices, and that's another area of concern. So for, and this is especially true for, for first-time home buyers who fit into these categories. The, the biggest and, and most serious areas of concern, uh, along with the ones I mentioned involving SNAP, Child Care Head Start, uh, WIC, involve public health and involve uh, people who are dependent on Medicaid reimbursements areas of health and the funding of our uh, housing programs. So let me say that if the federal uh, FHA funds for which we, we expect reimbursement on a regular basis are forthcoming, at least for many months we will be able to cover those costs with the city's own resources and await reimbursement for the federal government. On the direct uh, support for, for individuals, um, we're going to have to set up a program to prioritize uh, WIC households 
we're going to have to work with the food pantry network as I mentioned. We're also concerned about needle exchange programs and just the general area of, of, of health concerns with our partners. EOC cases that are handled back and forth between our own Department of Civil Rights and the federal government is obviously uh, another area of concern. There'll be delays in regards to hearings and people seeking out their own rights. So far, Madison Metro has not made any draws uh, during the shutdown, but has been told that reimbursement for costs will not be paid during the shutdown. That means that the cash balances in Madison Metro may fall and might have to be replenished, as I said, with short-term loans from our own general fund. I've gone through a number of areas of services to the city government, to the people we serve in terms of housing, in terms of food and nutrition, and we're doing better than most, and we will do better than most because of the very conservative budgeting we've done over the years and having adequate reserves. But they weren't intended for this purpose. They weren't intended to deal with the failures of the Trump administration and the shutdown of the government. We've been through some of these shutdowns before. I have never seen one where a president has held the whole nation hostage and jeopardized the lives of so many people over a temper tantrum on, on a specific project. My own feelings is that the wall is a waste of money. It's a poor investment for this nation, but that's got nothing to do with the uh, real issue here. The issue is the temper tantrum and the jeopardizing of the well-being of tens of thousands of families in Madison and Dane County. And obviously that number is far higher around the nation and in larger communities with larger populations that are dependent, particularly on the housing support, the nutrition, the food support, the health support, and, and those particular areas. Those are things that can't be put on hold. Somebody working on research that needs access to current data from the Census Bureau, they can wait a few months. Though I imagine graduate students uh, trying to prepare a doctorate uh, paper for a thesis by the end of the school year may not see my observations as uh, being that accurate. I suppose they would be uh, pretty desperate at this point. So that's where we're at. It's our intention as we go into February to start developing plans in all of these areas so that if we get to mid-February, we have backup plans prepared. Uh, the city council will have to act in certain areas because of the budgetary concerns. I'm confident of what our city council will do uh, in, in support of the needs of uh, families in, in, in the city of Madison. Any questions? Yes. Is there, a, sorry, is there a rough estimate on how many federal employees live in Madison? I couldn't give you that number. Um, you know, the, probably the largest federal facility is the Forest Research Product Labs, um, which is really a wonderful agency. Uh, people don't have an appreciation for the work they do on everything to research on strengthening uh, wood products to uh, one of my favorites, dealing with the issue of broken baseball bats so nobody gets injured. People don't know it, but they, when we had that plethora of uh, maple, ma maple bats splitting about five, seven years ago, our forest product research folks were very instrumental in figuring out how to solve that problem. So we've got, we got that. We've got folks at USDA uh, 
There's all the people at the bankruptcy court. I don't know well, what the situation is with the U.S. Marshals or the FBI. There is, of course, uh, the possibility of delays at the airport, though uh, our understanding is so far uh, the Dane County Regional Airport is, is working just fine. Do you have any estimate on just how long the city, um, you know, the city's reserves would kind of fill in for um, for these impacts before? We could go well into the summer. There's, there's no question about that. Uh, we, I, I wouldn't want to. The reserves were not designed for that. The reserves are designed, you know, if we should have some kind of horrendous natural disaster that's way outside of the scope of our budget. I guess just clarity on that question. You said well into the summer, but you said trouble starts mid-March. You're well, saying I guess we can last? We, 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 we can step in and, and take care of the lack of federal fundings, whether it's for the operation of our own housing or it's finding support for families in need of uh, substitutes for WIC or SNAP. We, we can go well, well through the summer, yes. I have an additional question. Um, yeah. you're, you talked a little bit about conservative budgeting um, here in Madison. You're on the Finance Committee, um, and they want to spend about 165000 additional dollars in security at the Troubled Old Tree Lane Apartments. Yes. Um, why spend public money for private security for a private company? You got to remember it's a partnership with the city. They are, an, 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 it's a private company, it is a nonprofit. Heartland is a nonprofit. And they, like uh, other organizations that, that work in this area, um, are, 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 are doing an extraordinary job in working with some of the families in our area who've had the greatest challenges with chronic homelessness, usually chronic homelessness that derives from other issues. We've learned that part of the problem at Heartland, a significant part of the Heartland problem uh, at Tree Lane, is not the tenants. It's people who are visiting some of the tenants. Four families have left the site who were very difficult to work with and weren't cooperating with management. We've got an enormous investment, 10, 11 million dollars between Heartland and us. We asked them to do something very extraordinary, which was to take on some of the most challenged families in regards to homelessness. And given the importance of this program, given the importance of the safety to the neighborhood, and given the future of our Housing First program, I think this is a reasonable investment. And our objective is similar to what's happened in uh, other housing developments similar to this one, which is eventually there's no need for any security. Just jumping back to the police department, are there any yeah. specific grants or partnerships through the federal with the federal government that have been put on hold because of the shutdown, or um, I know you know they've gone through several <coughs> rounds of grant processes. Bear with me for a second. Uh, We were to get some grant reimbursements for the fourth quarter of last year. I can't tell you which grants those were, but we've not been reimbursed. Uh, our JAG grant for uh, 2018 was still held up. Uh, We've got two large initiatives, which we're receiving some grant support. Uh, one of them is our safety program on Southwest Neighborhoods, Safety in Beautiful Place. And the other is a very important grant um, that's, that's the cornerstone of our strategy on opioids, and that's the MARI uh, program, Madison Area Recovery Initiative. And we made the decision to put more folks uh, found in possession and using opioids and heroin, heroin illegally into the MARI program for recovery 
rather than the criminal justice system. And obviously that's another example where we will continue uh, with our objective and we will cover the costs until we get the proper reimbursement. Is there any tally of like how much you haven't gotten in federal reimbursement? I can't so give you that number. Uh, we're, we're just kind of getting into this, but one of the things that we will have to do, and we will do as we get into February, if we have to start planning for long term, is figuring out for each one of these programs that we have to keep going, whether it's Madison Metro and its reimbursements, or whether it's the nutrition and food program for, uh, for, for mothers and their infants, we'll obviously have to get a monthly cost. When it comes to that, will it just be prioritizing? <clears throat> I don't think we'll be, I don't think we'll be in a position where we have to drop anything. I think we've got the resources uh, for, for all these programs for city residents to keep them going. TSA agents not showing up to the airport? Is that an issue at all? We, as I said earlier, it sounds like the airport's running smoothly, that the TSA is, is staffed there, uh, so that, that's, that's not an issue. Let me just mention, uh, next week is the annual January U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting in Washington. I will be attending that, and we are readjusting our uh, our schedule uh, for those three days and it looks like some of the more traditional conversations that we have are going to be supplanted by discussions about the, uh, the, the closed down. Mayor Benjamin, our president of our organization from Columbia, South Carolina, has already made that clear. So we're going to have almost 300 mayors uh, or that's how large your organization is. We'll have a couple hundred mayors probably uh, in attendance from New York and Los Angeles uh, to Madison, Toledo, Dayton, Gary, Indiana. And I can't imagine that there will be any issue that surplants this as the most important on the agenda. When was that? Sorry, I just... It's next week. It is next week. Yeah. When will, um, who have you been in contact with at the Dane County Airport, and when was the last time you heard from them? It was probably on Monday, and that's one of my staff members said, uh, talk to somebody from the county. Because we've been hearing from some people there that they have seen some TSA workers seem overly stressed, I, maybe I, one of them well, walked I, off I, the job. I can, I can, I can imagine. I mean, anybody who, who shows up for those 5 a.m. and 5.30 flights with the rush at that early hour of the morning, it's, uh, it's a challenge under any circumstances. If they are short-staffed, uh, it's, it's amazing that, that they're, they're still working smoothly there, that, that there's reports of tension uh, and people under stress, I certainly believe, and it's understandable. And I just hope that I'll have no problems when I leave uh, on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>